Little Insight. Today's reading, we are looking at the sun moving through Taurus 2023. Happy birthday, Taurus, and how this is possibly affecting you based on the house this is happening in within your birth chart. The timestamps for each house is in the description and I'll connect with you in your reading. Welcome first house. The areas of the first house deal with your physical body, what you present for others to see, how others perceive you, your personal branding as such. So I'm going to turn over these cards. You've got earth element and stability. Taking steps. Loss. Water spirit manifesting dreams and thinker. This might be a time of reassessment for you, House One. With Earth element stability, this is what you're seeking. I'm thinking there's a situation here where you're assessing how to cut your losses. Um, because you're wanting to take steps forward, you're wanting to go towards something more stable here. Whatever's happening with you, there might be some instabilities as such. You've got ideals you want to work towards with manifesting dreams. I think you're really wanting to put something in place now. You're quite inspired to take action on something because you've been thinking uh, about how it is that you can bring whatever you've been dreaming about into form. I think this might be a real time of intention setting, constructing that big dream, considering the action steps moving forward and doing so in a very um, pragmatic step-by-step -step way based on this earth element and stability. Why don't we have a look at the tarot cards and see what we can find with this. Right, so you've got five of wands here. And as I was thinking, you're trying to, um, there's a sense of cutting your losses with something. Um, understanding it's not giving you what you're, you're wanting from it. And um, making decisions about leaving something behind, possibly moving towards whatever ever it is that's going to be more supportive of your dreams. Let's have a look. What else? Yeah, look at that. You've got two cards of moving on. Eight of cups here, six of swords. Six of swords there. The full new beginnings. Wow, yes, for sure. And then page of cups. Now this could be to do with... Um, with the cups here, there's a emotional factor involved with this situation you might recently have been in a relationship that you are either separated just separated from or you are looking to separate out from and because of that with this, there is the sense of moving on from something. And with the cups here, that does look to be a moving on from an emotional situation because you are looking for something new here. With the full, there is definitely that sense of new beginnings. Page of cups, a page looking into that cup, wanting to see what else might be available for them. Um, something that's much more fulfilling for them because the manifesting dreams here mm, there's something that's been very disappointing about what you've experienced 
the five of wands that could point to definite um, conflict, arguments, misaligned goals, not quite on the same page of things. Maybe even with the thinker here, you're not, you don't have the same goals in mind, I think. You're not seeing eye to eye on something or some things. And because of that, the earth stability, um, the stability element has been compromised. So you're wanting to move towards that stability now. So it does look like there is a new beginning afoot for you, house one. You're certainly moving on. You're wanting to find that ninth cup here for that self-satisfaction, that happiness, that all around um, sense of happiness within yourself and you're now willing to look at what else might be possible out there you're taking the steps to to go forward in this so yes house one that is what is showing up for you i hope there is a message in here that's helpful take care and i will connect with you again in another reading Welcome second house. Second house deals with your material possessions, earnings that you make, um, your sense of abundance, attitude towards um, money as well. So why don't we have a look at the oracle cards you have, Aries I am. Deception. Travel. Strength. And the yin card. Beautiful yin card. I'm getting a sense of a balancing of the yin and the yang here with the Aries I am and the yin on the end as well. I think that um, it's like maybe you're... You're moving on from disappointments with regards to earnings, a job that you've had maybe, something's not been satisfactory for you within the abundance creation portion of what you're experiencing. Um, there's a definite move of moving on. There's a definite sense of moving on here with this travel card. You're wanting to move further away from these disappointments you've got the strength to do so you've got um, initiative here as well I think um, you've been considering this for a while with this oak tree there's a I actually think that you're not badly um, I think that you're you're actually not too badly placed with where you are financially but it just seems like there's the possibility of more here I'm looking at that uh, the base of the the oak tree it's very stable so if this is not what you have experienced financially I think you have a strong sense of um, your self-worth and you are understanding that you can get more than what you've previously received in whatever situation that you've um, either just currently left or you are still within but moving or looking to move out of why don't we have a look at the tarot cards see what we've got here Yeah, look, I, even with this shining light there, it's uh, a sense of an inner sparkle, like you're the diamond, um, you're a diamond and you know it. So there's more to be gained than what you've received. And you're not deceiving yourself about, you're not allowing whatever you've experienced recently to put you in a place of self-deception in regards to what it is that you're worth because you know that you've got more to receive yeah okay and the in card is about uh, receptivity it is about being able to receive and so in this case because we are talking about the second house we are talking about um 
a sense of abundance, material possessions, earnings. So I think that's very relevant here. Okay, let me have a look. Knight of Cups. Judgment. Four of Cups. Knight of Swords. Yes. Okay, for certain, this Seven of Pentacles is definitely telling me that um, the work that you've put into something, the attention that you've given to your means of earnings has not brought you back what you had hoped with the Seven of Pentacles. I think you are um, looking quite despondently at what it is that you've received and you're wanting something else in this cup here in the cards coming to you there is an opportunity that is going to be presented to you and um, that you need to be aware of and open to receive it might not come in the form that you are particularly looking for but it is an opportunity that's going to um, bring some movement because with two nights on the ca um, on the table here this is talking to movement you've got knight of swords which is quite um fast paced and the knight of cups this is moving towards something that will bring you more enjoyment in fact it's like the knight of cups has taken hold of this cup of opportunity here in the four of cups and is now moving forward with it hmm. because with this judgment card here you are it's like you might actually receive very much um a message I'm thinking more so a call a conversation with somebody that's going to um, connect you with an opportunity something that you can actually hear with this judgment card but this judgment card is also representing the fact that your sense of self-worth this Aries I am is allowing for this opportunity to be given to you because the judgment card is a card of reckoning so i think this is really talking about wherever you've been at recently in terms of um, whether it's work however it is that you have earned or earned your money received your abundance there is more to be had but not necessarily in the place that you're at currently. With the travel card there, the two knights on the table, there is this sense of movement. There is this sense of inner, um, inner abundance here with the light in that oak tree and also just that, that sparkling light here in the heart area. There is this knowledge, this high sense of self-value and self-worth and you are open to receiving that. So I would say keep that up and make sure you nurture yourself and continue to foster that sense of strength inner strength that knowing of your value because the cards are definitely showing that there is going to be an opportunity that's going to come through to you and like i said it could come through in an auditory form telephone call a conversation that you might have with somebody word of mouth something like that i think it could come through quite quickly here with the Knight of Swords. And it's definitely open an opportunity that's going to be more aligned with your sense of self-satisfaction and enjoyment. Fantastic. All right, then. So second house, that is your reading. I wish you all the best with this. Take care and I'll connect with you again in another reading. Welcome third house. This house deals with community, learning, early education, siblings and extended family so and um, why did i say communication and communication if i didn't already say that so why don't we go ahead and turn over these oracle cards to see what we're dealing with that was earth element and stability you've got discovery here consciousness Bluebird, Spirit and Happiness. That's lovely. Oh, Treasure Island. This really looks like an all-round happy time here. I'm looking at the um, 
the happiness in this deserving consciousness card as well as the bluebird spirit happiness and the treasure island this is really speaking to a sense of enjoyment here a sense of appreciation i think whatever is happening in your world house three it's it's good um, now with the areas that we're looking at so potentially connections with your extended family you might be enjoying time with your siblings um, this discovery and intention there might be um, interactions that new way of new ways of interacting with your family um, siblings that is bringing you a lot of happiness maybe you've not uh, been able to experience that kind of connection before for some of you this could be to do with learning taking up some kind of interest of yours that's that you're discovering a lot of joy in there's an awareness here about appreciating what you have and because this discovery is here with this treasure island it just makes me feel like um, you're uncovering things that you hadn't known of before that's what I'm getting from this I mean, it's all round a very good vibe here with these cards. And you've got the sense of stability, the sense of um, things being healthy, connections are good. You're feeling very secure in your experiences. Why don't we have a look at the tarot cards and see what we've got. Okay, two there. Okay, so we've got Seven of Pentacles, Page of Wands, Ten of Wands, okay, Two of Swords, oh, and Ten of uh, Swords. All right, so straight away I'm looking at these three here, this uh, two of swords in confusion with the ten of wands and the ten of swords now whatever you've experienced previously it's very much it's it's interesting that it's a stark contrast stark contrast to what's showing here so i think the relationships that you've had with um, siblings extended family i think that there have been some very trying times here i'm thinking here that you've put in a lot of effort to maintain these connections but they've never really brought you the satisfaction or the happiness that you would have wanted that you had wanted that you had worked on but i think it's with the arms crossed over the heart here, I think there's this sense of just being closed off. Now, for some, it could be that you have closed yourself off. But for most of you, I think this is about, no, I'm getting a sense it might be you that's kind of closed yourself off a little. The Page of Wands is showing that there is a new beginning a new desire here to connect, to move forward, to go past these Ten of Wands and these Ten of Swords. The earth, earth element and stability, this is definitely what it is that you're wanting. The cards are really showing that there is this experience of happiness. So if you have had this experience of being closed off, of feeling a disconnect or just a lot of burden and difficulties with your siblings or extended family, I'm seeing here with this treasure island happiness and consciousness, there's something that you're becoming more aware of. There's something that you're discovering that helps to shift these energies because the page of wands here is showing me that there is a new beginning in something. OK, and if it's to do with education, if it's to do with a mindset communication, then you're looking at things in a new way. You've discovered something that's lighting you up with the page of wands here. The efforts that you've put into a communication, um, some kind of learning is has been very arduous. It hasn't been easy at all. And I think you found um, a lot of difficulties with this communication or 
just getting your head around um, certain concepts of things but it's showing here that even though this has been the case with the, the page of wands that's talking to a newfound desire a newfound um willingness to maybe reassess approach it from a different perspective some kind of shift some kind of shift in consciousness is happening here and it's allowing a lot more light and a lot more positivity to come through do you know what i want to see what else might be mm. let's have a look at the um the ten of swords the two of swords and the Ten of Wands. Okay. Well, these came out, so why don't we just use them? Let's see what we've got. High Priestess. Okay, Six of Swords. We like that. There's movement. Four of Cups. The Emperor. Okay, so this high priestess is definitely telling me that you're connecting with something different now. This sense of consciousness in the high priestess is um, similar energies for me. It's like your awareness has shifted. There's movement here in terms of your thought patterns, and that's definitely showing with the fact that the Ten of Swords is indicating an end of something. But this crossed, um, this Two of Swords, that sense of not seeing things, not being a bit confused about something, or unwilling to connect or receive that information or that connection, I think there's movement away from that sense, that perspective, that um, take on things. I think this is very much about how you've perceived something because this four of cups is the only emotional as in the cup energy on the table so i think this is more to do with your mindset and you may have actually held a very strong mindset towards maybe some masculine energies within your extended family that could be the case. It could be if you are communicating or learning something that could be a masculine energy that you've um, struggled with. But this is really showing me that the shift is actually happening with you. Your sense of awareness is what's changing here. The emperor is the emperor. It's not going anywhere. That's just something that you have to deal with. But this is showing me that something's shifting in terms of um, maybe your intention, how you are choosing to see something. This high priestess is definitely showing that there is this internal knowing, an intuitive understanding of where you're at. And I think you're shifting how you want to look at the situation and you're choosing to focus on the, the positives. And in that, you're actually connecting to some gold nuggets here there's a sense of being able to view your situation in a much better light that's what i'm seeing here at house three but this is a great thing because this is showing you you know no matter what's happening around you even though for a time you've felt that burden and you felt the difficulties this is showing that the power still remains with you and now you're you're choosing to exercise it by directing your thoughts directing your awareness to focus on what it is that you can control more and in that you're discovering a sense of ease i think a sense of it's it's okay i've got this that's what i'm seeing house three all right okay so that has been your reading i wish you all the best in this and i look forward to connecting with you again take care Hello, fourth house. Fourth house matters include the home, that private space where you are innately you, you know, you coming home to you. Not the you that you show others in the first house, but that private sense of who you are. It's to do with parents, ancestry, property as well. Okay, so why don't we have a look at these cards, see what we've got. You've got Capricorn, I use, dark thoughts. Discovery, Starry Night and Acceptance, 
by the book. Okay, so how's for a lot of you, I'm thinking this is to do with responsibilities in the home, definitely. With that Capricorn, that is a very responsible, structured energy. And I'm um, drawn to the maze here and how it's um, formed from concrete. Very um, straight edges, straight lines, very structured. By the book too, that's a very Capricorn type energy. It's, you know, keeping the status quo, attending to the traditions of something. Now, if this is to do with family, parents maybe, I think this is really showing the potential of coming to terms with responsibilities. Or maybe in relationship with parents, there's this acceptance that... They're who they are. They've been brought up the way they've been brought up. That's influenced how they've brought you up. And in that, in that um, understanding, you just kind of come to the acceptance that this is the way it is. Um, their application of rules and intentions with regards to how they've raised you has been the construct of their own upbringing upbringing i'm also drawn to the ius here the capricorn um and by the book there's something about a house here there's some kind of i'm thinking in terms of um, property by the book it's like plans going by the book and plans making sure that you use things that you are making use of something in order to fulfill plans that have been set something of that nature maybe you're looking to figure out another way of working with certain rules in and I, I'm thinking about physical structures here, about building a home. There's something in that as well. And maybe you've had this sense of not being able to get anywhere um, and you're kind of wanting just to accept things as they are here, which is probably not a bad idea. Um, but you've just set this intention. You've got to find a different way of going about it if it is to do with something about um, the actual physical property, physical home, because you've been caught up in something here that's, um, that's not helping. Why don't we have a look at some tarot cards? Okay, well, these flipped over and we're going to take them. So let's have a look, especially that four of wands there. That's talking about the happy home. Knight of Wands, Five of Pentacles, that connects with these dark thoughts. Six of Wands is a beneficial outcome, some kind of success in something. Okay, oh well, interesting, very good. And then you've got the world here. For some of you, if you have been building a home and you've run into some difficulties, some kind of um, legalities by the book that's held you up, um, with the Capricorn I use, trying to figure out strategies that's going to be able to get you past that, this block of some sort here, um, with the Five of Pentacles showing as well, that kind of points to the same thing. Um, it looks like you are going to discover a way around it. This six of wands here is showing a, a successful outcome, especially with the world. That's a completion. And with the happy home here with the four of wands, that's also showing that whatever issues you've had with the construction of a home, then you're going to see that this is going to be resolved. OK, and you won't have to accept less than what it is that you want. Right, there might be some negotiations, but I think here it's about bringing the best to the table. Obviously, going with positive attitudes, um, having negative thoughts is not going to help anybody. So you want to get a, um, you want to leave this kind of negativity behind. You know, um, just come to a sense of acceptance and that 
things are the way they are and you can actually get better from it but it's about not focusing on this all right because look at what else is possible here this is what we're liking and the Knight of Wands is definitely showing movement in this energy. So I don't see that these um, hiccups are anything of concern in terms of if you are actually involved in building a home. Um, if it's to do with uh, relations within the home, to do with maybe parents, you know, this Four of Wands is really showing to a happy a happy outcome and the world there's a completion here i think this is also it does speak to the same kind of energy where um there is an acceptance when it comes to finding peace with how if we're talking about parents of course about um, acceptance with do you know in their late latter stages of their their lives they are who they are they are they are who they are and it's unlikely that they are going to change at all. In which case, I think um, this is saying that we're the ones that would be at a loss if we didn't try and find a sense of acceptance. And so I suppose this is about us being... And of course, it, it just depends on your situation. I'm not to know the personal um, background and the intricacies of your relationship with your parents, but this the cards are definitely showing that there is a sense of victory in an awareness of a an accepting kind of view on things. I think here though with the Capricorn energies and plus the Taurus energies this is about the pragmatic approach very steady sturdy sure all right sure-footed um, the erratic the erratic energy of these dark thoughts and consciousness is yeah being left out in the cold here that these thoughts need to be left out in the cold and you need to move forward with the sense of happiness here and the movement that the knight of wands indicates is about moving through those energies and being successful okay all right so i hope that's been helpful to you fourth house that is what's come through all the best for you and i look forward to connecting with you again in another reading take care Hello to the fifth house. Fifth house deals with romance, children, creative expression and joy. So why don't we have a look to see what we've got here. Oh, perfect. Look, Taurus, it's you. Huh. And it's I have. Love that. Spirit, family, friends and guides. Oh, angels, four directions sense of a lot of support here angelic support spiritual support family support whether they're here in the physical realm or not so phoenix transmutation and to be fair hmm. well there's a lot of light in this there's a lot of um, clarity you've got a sense of change here and the phoenix and transmutation that's a very creative force a creative energy to be fair this is about a balance maybe even a choice well hmm okay uh, the energies i'm getting a lot of energetics from this but not so much um situationally based so why don't we have a look at um the tarot cards see what else we can see here i mean taurus is definitely about the physical the things that you can um, sense as in uh, the senses the physical senses so touch smell taste things that you can actually physically appreciate 
It's about your sense of values as well. What, what do you appreciate? What do you enjoy? Okay, let's have a look at what these tarot cards are showing us. <clears throat> Nine of Swords, King of Cups. Five of Wands, Seven of Swords, and Two of Cups. I'm getting romance vibes from this. Difficulties in romance. You've got the Nine of Swords, so that's um, some challenging thoughts unhappiness something that's keeping you up at night things that are bothering you and five or rather seven of wands having to stand your ground on something feeling like you're losing ground on something uh, and the seven of swords as well it's energy that has not been beneficial for you whatsoever the two of cups is what's leading me to a sense of um, a romantic connection here so these energies are needing to be transmuted. Whatever you're experiencing right now, it is not supporting your sense of self-worth, self-value. And the Taurus, you are all about having those values validated, feeling that sense of security, feeling that sense of nurture, of being, of that, that security too. And this is showing me that you're not experiencing that right now. This is what we want, the King of Cups. King of Cups is that, is that sense of um, being well nurtured, well balanced emotionally. And this is certainly what we're striving for here. But these energies around us are not, they're not supporting that at all. And there's an imbalance that's occurring here with the To Be Fair card. There is this need here with these cards, the Two of Cups being straight underneath here. There's an imbalance in a romance and this is asking for that to be righted. There needs to be a harmony. There are lots of energetics, like I said initially. There, you have a lot of support, whether it's family, friends in the physical realm or family, friends, guides and angels in the spiritual realm. This is where you have the um, ability to ask for assistance, not only to the family, friends in the physical, but also to your guides in the non-physical. That is also some guidance and some advice here for you. Why don't you have a look to see what else we can see? But I mean, this seems to be very clear. It's to do with romance that is stripping the joy from your life. And Taurus, you know, this sense of physical pleasures, the pleasures that the physical life can give you, this is very much a Taurus quality, a Taurus sense of inner desire to experience that. And so... This is you being true to you. So this is this is not wanting too much. This is very important for your sense of well-being. And these energies here are not giving you that whatsoever. So we we want to look at what what we can do with that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the Nine of Cups on the Nine of Swords. Seven of Cups on the King. Chariot. Strength there. Movement also. The Moon. Yeah, there has been something here that's been hidden from you. You're not seeing clearly on something. And I mean, when you're not seeing clearly when you when things aren't um transparent then of course you're going to be confused you're going to be uncertain you're going to wonder what's happening um if things are 
true you're feeling like there might be some deception happening here with the seven of swords this four of cups is definitely asking you not to focus on that i mean that's a very clear signal here the moon on the two of cups i mean that's a very emotional card but I'm thinking here with this moon, this is not, this issue is not something that's just going to pass with the cycles of the moon. It's not going to, it's not something that is going to be taken care of with the passing of time. I think this is where you're being asked to take control of the situation here with the chariot. You need to grab the reins of your own decision making, your own choice making. Because as much as you've wanted the king of cups in this relationship, you haven't got the king of cups you've been given a cup of disillusionment even and and that's okay look this is what we do in life sometimes but now that we are seeing things a little more clearly here because you're you're, you're receiving light from all directions here this is about things being made clear to you and so now it's not about leaving your your head in your hands and you not seeing it's about coming to terms with the situation as it is and empowering yourself to move towards something that you actually really really want would really enjoy here and you'll get that sense of self-satisfaction and dreams and wishes fulfilled here but that phoenix is really telling me that um, you're going to have to be the transmuter of this yourself you do have this assistance around you, but when it comes down to it, you're the one that has to take the matters into your own hands and be the um, director of this chariot. Because you want, you want this fairness, you want this equal exchange of energy with this love connection, the to be fair card and this um, two of cups here. Do you know, seeing eye to eye, giving equal, equally to a relationship and feeling secure in it. That is what I am seeing, fifth house. Hmm. This is really speaking to me more about the relationship. I mean, if it is to do about a creative expression, then it's, a, it's one that hasn't um, fulfilled you. It is draining you more than it is giving to you. This is about maybe transmuting that creative project into something else, maybe taking a different direction on it. On it. The Angels of Four Directions. There is the possibility of maybe transmuting, changing it, adjusting something in order to be able to take it further to another level. Whatever dreams that you've had uh, surrounding it whatever disillusionments that you've had it can it's still possible to take it further and to create more from it if it is to do with a creative project because you want to feel that sense of centeredness when you are when you are um, so you can actually enjoy whatever it is that you're creating and you might not have felt that to date but either way whether it's relationship or creative project even though I am looking more I'm seeing this more to do with a relationship romantic relationship then this is like I said transmutation here you taking control of the situation and um, steering this chariot in a way that is going to be beneficial for you all right. Okay then, fifth house, that is what has come through. I wish you all the best and I look forward to connecting with you again in another reading. Take care. Hello, sixth house. Sixth house matters deal with health, nutrition, daily routines, which tends to reflect work and work colleagues. All right. So why don't we have a look at um, what these oracle cards are. You've got Scorpio, I transform. Higher self. Letting go. Got two of these cards, so you've got patience there. Pegasus transcending, lovely. And between worlds. Ah, oh, look, it's like mirror images, even. How interesting. Okay. 
Well, this fit, let's just move these along. Hmm. So sixth house, you might be in between jobs right now, um, or you're considering leaving one job and moving to another. There's some kind of need for a change, transformation. I think your sense of appreciation, acknowledgement in your current position has expired. You've felt or you're feeling that there is a need to move on. Hmm. If you haven't had an opportunity to move forward, I do see a door opening here. I see doors opening here, but one is open. So there might be, there might actually be an opportunity that you are considering. Hmm. But between worlds. Yeah, so you might be in that void zone at the moment where you're not quite sure about where you're heading, but you certainly know that this, where you're at, is not where you want to be. And it's true, I think that um, with this Transcending Pegasus card, there's a sense of you having outgrown the place that you're in, the environment, the experience that you have had to date. It's certainly, it's not fulfilling you anymore. And I love that with this Patience card, with the um, one leg bent there, it's literally like they just want to get out of where they are right now. So that, I think, is you. Okay, why don't we have a look at tarot cards, see what else we're seeing. What other information we have. Okay. Oh yes, Ten of Wands, you've definitely, oh, you've definitely gone the hard yards. Three of Cups, Temperance, oh look, Healing, Patience, yeah, oh look, and one foot in the water, just like here too, oh wow, look at that symbolism, incredible, Five of Wands, Four of Cups, this Four of Cups has been showing up quite a bit, so Five of Wands and the Ten of Wands, so Yes, you have, hmm, you've certainly outgrown something. You have probably been in this situation, work situation, even a health situation for way too long. If it's to do with your health and nutrition, there's some kind of a shedding here, some kind of a release, um, a transmutation happening. I think it's you letting go of past hurts maybe with just the way that glows there and that's going to help release some of those issues that you've been experiencing. Yeah, I think you're definitely stepping into another way of experiencing life. I mean, this Between the Worlds card, you can see how grey it is here and then how colourful it is. So, And even the bird itself is is um, dark and drab and then moving into more vibrancy so if this is to do with health whatever kind of health challenges you've had I think you're releasing those now you have been very patient you've been you've tried your best with whatever application approaches or medical approach medical advice you've done your best with those and I think it's starting to there's something here that's uh, that's starting to have an effect but this letting go card is really I think you've, you've let go of the struggle with it, with the Ten of Wands. I think if it is to do with health and nutrition, there's something about a release here. And I think that release is going to allow you to step through, step through to the other side of something. That's what I'm seeing there. Mm. Because the Temperance card also is talking to a healing. So if this is to do with health and nutrition, you've carried a burden for quite a while. You've had to really fight your battles with it. But this temperance card is showing some kind of healing here, some kind of balance. And because of that, there is a celebration to be had. 
and you being able to find some peace underneath this tree here and just sit and relax instead of having to apply yourself to that inner strength of having to heal yourself in a sense and I mean that could be literally too and certainly if it is to do with work then like I said you, you've kind of been there long enough probably way past when you probably should have moved and I suppose um, for some time it did give you that sense of community, that sense of enjoyment, but I think the scales kind of tipped. Um, it's no longer giving you that, that return on investment and you felt a bit of disharmony with it. And now you're looking at what you've got here. The cups that used to be up in the air are now on the ground here, okay? And once before where you may have been dancing, now you can see that it's just stagnant. And it's not getting you anywhere. So I think this is definitely showing that in terms of a work situation, that you're definitely ready to move on from this. Let's see what's going to, let's see what opportunities might be about you. I mean, with the, the four of cups there, it does look to be an opportunity. And I think with the between worlds, that is you stepping through, through a door into another opportunity. I can see that. Definitely with the doors opening there, there is a sense of, something opening up for you let's see these two jumped out at me so why don't we have a look at these ones all right so you've got all oh, the full don't we love that new beginnings house six ah queen of swords okay clarity and understanding knowing what you want and going for it claiming it for yourself yeah, I think because you've been through this situation for so long, that's given you clarity on what it is that you don't want. So you know what it is that you do want. Very simple, really, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, magician. Oh, lovely. My goodness, look at that. That's brilliant. Look, you've got a new beginning. So if it's health, new beginning, new awareness of what's required to keep your health. Okay, the magician, you've been given the tools to be able to ensure that, that, that you do the best by yourself with that. And the queen of pentacles, you know, healthy um, abundance, fulfilling experience of life here with the pentacles and material and just that healthy you can see here with that picture that that is a vibrant, a vibrant card. And so that you've got that vibrancy and health and, and physicality now. If it's to do with work, well, look, you've got the full new beginning, Queen of Swords, an understanding of what you want, the ability to create that for yourself now. And the Queen of Pentacles, that's giving you that independence. You're being able to create that independence for yourself and put you in a position where you are well provided for. And you're providing for yourself. It's not like someone else is providing for you. You are the one that's doing that for yourself. So that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. That's an excellent outcome, House Six. Absolutely love that for you. Congratulations. All right, so that is what's come through. I hope there is something in this reading that is helpful to you. All the best, and I look forward to connecting with you again in another reading. Take care. Welcome, Seventh House. Seventh House deals with relationships, marriages, business partnerships, and contractual agreements, one-on-one -on -one connections. So why don't we have a look to see... What we have here with the Oracle cards, you've got Grand, Cross and Provoker. Angels of Four Directions. The Loving Woman. Did you see that? You've got Spirit Guardian of Winter and Retreat. and come to the edge there seems to be a lot of tension here with the grand cross provoker even with the angels of four directions it's like things are coming at you from four directions um certainly come to the edge you're really being pushed to make a decision on something you're feeling that need to to jump into something to jump away from something there's something about this come to the edge thing here uh this energy but grand cross provoker that's certainly 
a lot of tension here. It's like energy is coming from all sides and you're not quite sure. Um, there's this confusion about how to direct it effectively, efficiently and wisely. And so this is what we want when it comes to the Grand Cross Provoker because those energies can be very unsettling. Sometimes there's a very reactive tendency with those energies. And when one reacts, um, typically sometimes, well, you react, things don't go very well. So it's, it's much better to be able to respond. All right, so loving woman and retreat. Well, this could be a relationship where you are retreating or you're finding some sense of peace with a female friend, partner. There's some kind of sense of loving connection here, potentially. Hmm. Well, okay, why don't we... Or on the, on the opposite side of things, this could be where there was once a loving connection with someone they used to be that give you that sense of peace and harmony and like a retreat from the outside world and now you're not feeling that so much I mean that's something too okay why don't we have a look at what the tarot cards can help us with We love the Ten of Cups, all the world. Seven of Swords, Six of Wands, King of Swords. Hmm. For some of you, if this is to do with a relationship, it could be that the happy home... Um, the happy home that you once had has come to an end. Um, there is some tricky uh, dealings right here with the Seven of Swords, but it does show some kind of successful outcome and um, a provision of truth here with the King of Swords. There's a clarity, there's a decision that's being made that's quite clear cut. There's no going back from it. But um, with the success card here, it's something that is positive. And this could be you, the King of Swords, having this sense of clarity about where you stand. In which case, this connection that once was um, very nurturing is no longer so. There might be some trepidation with the movement forward, with the come to the edge. That's about facing fears and mm, acknowledging that that fear is there, but not allowing it to hold you back. So that could be the case. With the spirit card, I mean, that's showing a lot of light, a lot of love. That is definitely an indication of energetic support for you to move forward with something. The Grand Cross and Provoker, yeah, I think um, the energies here have just gotten stuck. They've not moved as they should have. They're not moving. They're not flowing. And I think because of that, there has just been this buildup of tension and disharmony here. So for some of you, that might be the case. For others, it's completely the opposite. This is showing that um, you are connecting very strongly with, with um, somebody and you're wanting... You're feeling that sense of harmony, that sense of home, that sense of, of love, nurturing. You're feeling that. But with a Grand Cross Provoker, now that's interesting. I think there might, maybe there's some kind of, there's some kind of, um, there's something in this connection that is tumultuous. The, I think it might be something external. 
even though the Grand Cross Provoker is normally um, an internal energy, but I think with this connection that you're feeling very a lot of love with and you're wanting to take further, there's some kind of tumultuous energy around. And it could be external, actually, like I said here with the spirit full direction, like there's energy coming from all four sides. And it could be to do with um, family, the house there. It could be to do with external influences that are maybe not supportive of this relationship and with the come to the edge this is understanding that that fear of um, maybe you know going against what others are expecting of you that fear is real okay and you're going to have to take a risk on something but I mean with the cards here there's certainly that tricky energy in the middle and so you can't we can't ignore this so there is something to be addressed with this matter, but this is this is more external. I think here it's more external. It's something that's being imposed upon you. That's something that other people are doing that affects you. But with the Ten of Cups here and the world, it's it's like a successful outcome here. There is a victorious experience there's victory there is success there's happiness there is a positive outcome here and I think it's because you've held to your you've held to your truths you've held to um, your beliefs here with the king of swords and you're not being swayed it's like this is where it's at this is what I want this is what I know and so do you know everybody else has to kind of just deal have a look at the seven of swords what is the seven of swords please what can we see with the seven of swords let's have a look what we have here oh seven of swords seven of wands so you're definitely having to you're being forced to stand your ground on something defend yourself defend your love maybe there's a defending here. Hmm. But it's because you have this belief, you have this intuitive understanding about what's true for you. And so you're trusting in this, and I think you're not wrong. I think this is showing that you do have an understanding more than what others can actually perceive and see. This is your truth and you're standing by it. And because of that, you do find yourself in a successful, successful position. And um, yeah, you're you're holding to your truth here. You're you're standing strong, sitting strong in your throne there. So yeah, apply apply the energies to your situation, see how that fits. But that is definitely what I'm seeing here. It does see it does show you having to stand your ground on something, whether it's to go to a relationship or whether it's to leave a relationship. There's an understanding that this is your truth, your internal truth. And then it's about relaying that internal truth outwards to others so they can understand it too. All right. OK, seventh house, that's what's come through. I hope there's a message in here that serves you. I wish you all the best. Take care and I'll connect with you again in another reading. Hello and welcome to the 8th house. 8th house matters include death and rebirth, other people's finances, taxes, intimacy, psychological issues too, that's in there, investments, inheritance. So why don't we have a look at what is showing. Aries I am, very strong energy. New beginnings. Ah. Loving woman. Spirit guardian of autumn letting go. To the sea. We well, love the new beginnings here. I mean, that's lovely. The letting go, so new beginnings and letting go. So that does have that sense of death and rebirth there. Um, loving woman in the middle, there is this sense of nurturing. And to the sea, you might feel a little bit lost at sea right now with this 
sense of in-between, moving from one thing into another. The letting go might be to do with a transformation of sorts where you're discovering who you are. And because of that, because Aries, I am a new beginnings, that's very much one and the same. There is the sense of wanting to push past the old, wanting to go into new territory. To the sea, I mean, the water element there with this expansiveness connection to all hmm. okay why don't we have a look at the tarot cards I mean that water could also be a reflection of I see it as um, money why would I see it as money because it's like um, the eighth house is to do with financial matters and maybe you've just been skating along with your finances, not really um, just allowing it to take you where it's just being at, oh yes, being at the mercy of where it takes you, what you're doing what needs to be done with it, but not really directing the course of your movement of where you're going with things it's like giving your control up in a way and maybe now it's time to take that control back and you're letting go of past habits that have kind of mm, had you a little bit wayward directionless even hmm okay well well, that was coming through. So anyway, why don't we continue? Let's see what else we've got. I mean, that's one perspective. I see this one. Let's get this out. If it's to do with intimacy, then it's about... Um, wanting to have more control over matters that you've probably allowed yourself just to, mm, like you've just gone with the flow of things where, where instead of taking that power that is yours and actually directing yourself through situations. I mean, that's financial as well as intimate, even psychological, if you've felt that you've... Um, been a bit aimless in life, then this is about determining where you go next and doing so in a very empowered way. Four of Swords, the higher event. Five of Swords, Judgment, Queen of Swords. Okay, this is definitely showing me a um, psychological thought, mental energy from these cards. You've got three swords. And then you've got the Major Arcana. So I think it's about, I do actually think this Go to the Sea card is, is relevant with initial interpretations. This Four of Swords is really giving me a sense of you um, kind of sleepwalking through life, not being in control. And there might have been a very defeatist, defeatist kind of attitude or outlook where maybe that you just haven't really put in the effort you can't be bothered there's something about that but there seems to be a shift there seems to be a shift in your uh, maybe it's a belief system there's something or maybe it's just an end of a cycle here where 
you've got new beginnings coming in. You've got this new sense of renewal. And I think this is just a sense of self-love here that's coming through with your your natural Taurus kind of um, energy of, of values, that sense of self-worth, that sense of abundance. I think that's finally coming through for you. I Maybe a lot of you haven't found that or haven't experienced that for yourself previously. And like I said, it's like you've kind of um, been sleeping out your own life you've not actually been fully engaged in it but now it's that's changing you're stepping into you're stepping into a time of your life where I think you're kind of you're heeding a call of something you've been called you've got this sense you've got this this inner pull towards showing up for yourself more than you ever had before because you don't want to stay asleep in your own life here. Eyes closed, four of swords here, just not engaged. But when you are engaged, it's like, yeah, there's this kind of defeatist energy coming from here. That's what I'm seeing. That's what's coming through. But now it's like, no, 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 no. Writing's on the wall now. You see it for what it is. This is not how you want to be able to um, go forward in life now. You've got the sense of a new beginning. Look, you're a little baby here starting out again. Wonderful. Aries I am, that's this new beginning too. Venturing into a way of life that you've not experienced before, a new territory. Love that. Okay, so this woman, this loving woman, I mean, I just kind of think that that's that sense that you have for yourself male or female it's an energy there's a graciousness here there's some a sense of grace and you're giving that to yourself now in, in the world because queen of swords you are claiming your truth and you are understanding that there's more to be had there's more to be had in life now and your mindset is shifting so whatever psychological or whatever kind of mental um, headspace issues that you've uh, dealt with negativities I think that's really being cleared out right now I think the energies are really supporting you in lifting your head here opening your eyes standing up not being asleep and look you're on top you're on top of the world there Throne, sword, eyes open and demanding more from life. That's what I'm seeing there for certain. Because I think this the Hierophant here, you know, I don't know how or why, but there's something that's shifted here that's given you a key to a new beginning. And with the, um, you've gone into another stage of your life here with the Hierophant. I wonder, is it, I mean, this could be to do with the change in finances given that it is the eighth house. Maybe you've had a release from having to deal with finances. I don't know, but why don't we have a look to see what's here. Star, okay, maybe. Dreams coming true. Maybe um, you have discovered a dream for yourself. Maybe it's that. Well, three of swords, okay. Queen of cups. Ah, okay, well then. Um, swords energy again so there's some kind of heartache that you've had to deal with some kind of disappointment something that's really pierced the fabric of your outlook in life and it's really um, had the clouds hovering over you for some time but I think with this with this call of the judgment card here You've got new aspirations here, look, star card, new aspirations, new dreams. You're aspiring to more and you've got the Queen of Cups. Look, you've got the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. This is about self-nurture, this is about self-care. I think you're really um, coming to terms with the fact that in order to do, in order to do better for yourself, you have to have a lot more love and compassion for yourself and this is you doing that here this queen of cups and through that love and compassion you've got this sense of awareness of, of what's right and what's wrong what's right for you and what isn't and now you are the one that's dictating how it is that you're going to experience life moving forward ah oh, that's wonderful I love that that's very empowering eighth house congratulations well done yeah letting go of the old heartaches despondency yes there's a despondency here with 
with this go to the C card of despondency. Mm, yes, 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 that's it. Okay, no longer despondent. You're aware, you're sovereign emotionally and mentally. You've got this, you've got this. Okay, eighth house. There we go, that's what's come through. I hope this is going to help you in some way. All the best to you. I look forward to connecting with you in another reading. So until then, take care. Welcome ninth house. Ninth house matters include higher education, foreign cultures, long distance travel, philosophies, ideologies, that kind of thing. So why don't we have a look what the oracle cards are showing. Grand Cross and Provoker. The Honouring Path. Conflict. Similar energies there. Meandering pathway and flow. All that glitters. Hmm, with this Grand Cross Provoker and Conflict card, that does point to energies that are stuck, that are at cross purposes with one another. They're not flowing properly, and we certainly want this to happen. We want those energies to flow in a more cohesive, manner there's some kind of recognition here you might be studying um, you might have finished studies and now you're graduating I mean that's a potential here and maybe that entire time of studying has been a real challenge with the Grand Cross Provoker you it's not been an easy path to follow and there might have been some internal conflicts you've had to deal with along the way but you've got there there's something about these masks that are drawing me in. I don't know if that's to do with internal truth that you've come to realize is not yours. Oh, well, you've come to align with an internal truth. And because of that, some masks have had to be removed because it wasn't really true to, it wasn't really true to you. There's something about this gold, all that glitters isn't gold kind of feeling here. And maybe you've you've just come to a deeper understanding of um, of a certain truth for you, but it hasn't been an easy truth to arrive at with this grand cross provoker and conflict. I think maybe it's um, maybe you've taken an honourable path, or there's some kind of pathway that you've chosen that has gone against the the flow. You've actually chosen a, a very um, potentially a very difficult. You've made a difficult choice, and. Maybe you have um, turned down an institution, something that I should know if you're offered a position maybe in a um, like in a university and you've just kind of seen the truth of the reality of that position and it's not as appealing as what maybe previously you were um, you may have thought it to be I mean that's a possibility too why don't we have a look at the tarot cards and see what else we can see here Maybe you're finding your own pathway in life and it's certainly different from where you had thought it was going to go. And that choice is causing some conflict with maybe um, established, the establishment, institutions. Mm. Okay, Ace of Wands. Wow, okay, new beginnings there. New sense of inspiration a gift of a new direction queen of swords that's an honoring of your truth you are standing by a truth here you're claiming a truth for yourself the moon i think yeah there's something here that hasn't that wasn't as clear to you as it is now i think previously this glittering gold here I think was luring you in it has a tendency to lure most of us in and but it's because there wasn't any clarity there wasn't any clear vision about um, what it meant but I think here with the queen of swords you're seeing it for the truth you're seeing the truth in it now you're understanding that all that glitters isn't gold 
And so because of that, despite the conflict that you're experiencing, you're choosing a different path. And look at the light in this path. It looks wonderful. Okay, so why don't we see Hanged Man? Yes, look, you've got a new perspective on something. Some kind of, something's changed in the way you're looking at, at a thing. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so with that Nine of Swords, that hasn't been an easy decision for you to arrive at. And I think this is where this um, energy of the Grand Cross Provoker and Conflict is coming in. That's That has realized or that has materialized for you in troubling, troubling internal conflict, um, troubling thoughts, really worrying yourself, worried about um, how this is going to affect you this choice that you're wanting to make, this choice that you have made. I mean, this shows to me that you've made it because you've, the new, the new beginning is there. You may, maybe you haven't actually voiced it as yet. You haven't taken that step to, those steps to free yourself in order to go down this new pathway. But I think essentially that energy of that decision making has been made. It's just not been one that's been easily arrived at. There's definitely been a lot of um, conflict, internal conflict going on here. But you have seen the truth of the situation. And because of that, you are going to determine your own path moving forward. So congratulations. That is a difficult thing to do, but you've done it. All right. You've made that decision. And that decision is allowing you a new start in something. And look, you, you can... Um, Stand with your head held high and you are being true, true to yourself, true to your values. Okay, so the honouring path, you're honouring your set of values here, all right? So you can hold to that. So congratulations, House Nine. This shows me that you are well and truly on your way to following your own path towards this light. A lot of positive energies to support you in that movement forward. So Ninth House, those are the messages that have come through for you. I hope that one of these messages is helpful to you. I do look forward to connecting with you again in another reading. So until then, take care. Hello and welcome 10th house. 10th house matters include career, direction in life. It does involve a lot of visibility to be seen in the world. Unlike the 4th house, which is your private space, this is about you being visible and being recognized, okay? It also deals with authority figures. So why don't we have a look at the oracle cards, solar eclipse and revolution. Got loss. Mm, reds, oranges, vast universe. Chaos. And co-create. Well, straight away I'm looking uh, at and seeing a lot of disruption in this. And these cards here and the energy, the chaos. I think this is definitely some kind of shift and change that's happening for you, whether it's in your um, some kind of role that you are holding that is very visible, some kind of responsibility, some kind of, I mean, it could even be with something that you are creating to put on the world stage, but there's some kind of change, revolution here, a disruption of sorts but it's a disruption it's like organized chaos in a way because there's a co-creation the co-creative element here so things have to be shaken up and changed in order for it to land where it should do for a better outcome so there could be a situation where you're having to let something go but this is also a card where something that's released actually returns to you and it could return to you in a better form because it's ha having to I mean if I just talk very esoterically it's like going out into the big vast universe there and then it's returning in a different form in a better form but there's a co-creation element this co-creative element is very encouraging 
because it's telling us that despite this chaos and this change that's happening here, it's for a better outcome. Hmm. Why don't we have a look at the tarot cards and say, oh, well, that just flipped over. Okay, Ace of Wands, so why don't we take that? Well, that's very good. This is like um, a new creative energy that's come through. That could even be a spiritual connection too. But that's definitely speaking to new beginnings. Oh, gosh, that flipped over as well. Six of Wands and the Moon card. Well, that's a very 10th house energy there. That six of wands, it's a very visible success. Victory. Okay, let's see what else is here. Oh, ace of pentacles, two, two aces. Wow, that's new beginnings all around. New beginnings in uh, wealth and finance. Um, abundance, something material that's been created. And then here is a new beginning for inspiration. New energies to move forward with. You've got victory here as well. And this looks to me like whatever, this is twofold. Um, any disappointments that you've had with regards to um, unrecognized, unfulfilled dreams. I think this is about what's being let go this loss here, cutting your losses on something, allowing it to just move out. And there's something about freeing up that space, that energetic space and allowing something new to come in. Because then if that is the case and something is released, and that just means that these cuts can actually provide you with um, more opportunities to co-create and um, fulfill your dreams here. Oh my gosh, honestly. 10th house this is really wonderful the moon aspect this is showing that um for me this is really there's a hidden aspect to this that i don't know that we're actually going to be able to find out about i don't um in terms of it's the central card too so given that it's also under the um, the vast universe and spirit here i think there is a hidden element here an unknown factor that is still being formed. Hmm. I wonder if we can find out about that, the moon. What about the moon for house 10, please? Okay, how many cards do we have here? Three. Why don't we see? Queen of Cups, Hanged Man, and eight of cups all right so this loss that's equating to this uh, walking away i think there's something that just has to be released let go of whether it is that you're moving on um, and allowing something new to come in or something is or well, this is really about you moving forward to something too towards something co-creating another opportunity for yourself but the hanged man there's a change Hmm, there's either a change in perspective, which is possible, but I'm thinking that this is more of a pause, a pause button. Something is still being worked out. That's what I'm getting from here. Something is still being worked out, like I initially said, with the moon and the vast universe. I don't think um, there's one factor in this equation that hasn't found its form yet. I mean, I don't know how that what that would be but these cards are showing here that there is movement there is movement but things are still in the dark it hasn't found its shape its form yet to to be brought to light hmm. and queen of cups yes it's being nurtured look this is about the queen of cups is like a nurturing energy and it's a cup energy so i think whatever it is it's been growing i think it's literally being formed so i mean i think that you might know what this might be given that this is a reading of your 10th house energy so you might actually know what you're waiting on to be formed even if I'm not able to actually get a, a grasp of what that might be. But it's certainly something that's being nurtured. It does offer a return of investment in terms of your emotional quota. It's going to be very joyful for you, fulfilling, satisfying. A dream coming true, so to speak. 
but maybe in a different form than what you had expected. Yeah. So all is not lost with this chaos here. Um, there's a reasoning behind it and it's creating the success here. And with two aces, new beginnings, financial success, new inspirations, all around success. Well done. Congratulations, House 10. That is what's come through. I hope this is helpful to you. All the best. And I look forward to connecting with you again in another reading. Take care. Welcome to House 11. So the 11th house deals with friendship groups, associations, networking, humanity at large, definitely your hopes and dreams as well, aspirations. So why don't we have a look at what the oracle cards are showing us, Aquarius I know. Mm. Stuck energy. If you go by the natural um, zodiac, then the Aquarius Aquarius actually falls into the 11th house. So that's interesting. Okay, and um, stuck energy, dark thoughts, wisdom, lovely. The fates. Mm. That's very deep energies here, isn't it? The fates and wisdom. Certainly with this stuck energy and dark thoughts, I think with this house, there's an understanding that you've come. There's an awareness that um, has been hard won, I think. With the wisdom, I think you've experienced maybe some challenging relationships with friends. But I think with the fates there, I think this is really showing um, that there are larger energies at play when it comes to these experiences that you've had. And I just love the Aquarius I know card. Look at those colours. Don't you think they're beautiful? So I think this is like a heart wisdom. Aquarius is very much, a, it's an air sign, so it's a, it's like this mental acuity, but I do get a sense of this, um, this heart knowing in this that's brought you to a state of wisdom here. Mm. Okay, let's go straight into some tarot cards so we can have a look. Well, that flipped over, so we're going to take that. Ace of Pentacles, a gift of a new beginning. Whatever it is that you've experienced when it comes to networks, um... Oh, goodness, look. Now, the star card is considered an Aquarius card too. So, wow. Aquarius, Aquarius. 11th house. Dreams and aspirations. Hmm. I mean, this could also be to do with your dreams and aspirations, your, your desire to do something more in the world, to... Hmm. Maybe you're feeling call, uh, called towards a cause of something, of some kind. Hmm. Okay, why don't we have a look and see what these are. Death. Yeah, look, death, rebirth. End of something, beginning of something else. Strength. My gosh, look. Three major arcana. Four. Oh, wow. 11th house, what is happening with you? These are major energies in play. I think this is definitely, this Fates card is, that's kind of like saying it all. There's something that is, energies that are beyond the day-to-day -day here. These are big transformational shifts here for you. Wow. What are you doing, house 11? This world card, I mean, that could signify a closing of a chapter on something and it could also uh, reflect you doing something out in the world, you wanting to have a greater effect on the world stage, on the uh, affecting humanity, um, helping humanity, giving some kind of strength, some kind of alignment here, a dispelling of negativity, that's what's showing up here, dealing with old patterns, societal patterns that have kept us stuck what on earth are you doing wow 
This is profound. Yeah, you're, there's there's some kind of um, ending of some kind of passions, societal passions that you're you're actually having a hand in here. With look, can you see how with that line, that figure here, where she's she's hands on there. So you are actually having a direct impact with a change within your community circle, national impact or even international with a world card. I mean, that does show something that is more far reaching than just your, your friend circle. Oh my gosh, even with the star card, there's a lining of your aspirations, just something you're taking out into the world. And don't you just love that? Can you see the fates card there? So where the, the stars are lined up and look, it's like the fate card is joining with the star card and those stars are continuing. They're aligning. The stars are aligning for you. The stars are aligning for you, 11th house. My gosh, this is exciting. I wonder what you're doing. Okay, it seems very clear here that whatever you're doing, it's impacting it's having a reach way outside of yourself. There is a ending of some cycles, ending of stuck energy, ending of dark thoughts. I think you are doing something out in the world that is shifting the dynamics of the old order in some, in some way. And um, you are bringing light to a shadow here with this consciousness and dark thoughts, this shadow figure here I think that you're shining a light on it in, a, in such a way that people get to see get to um, realize their own inner wisdom here because you in some way have seen that for yourself you have a knowing about this and now you're wanting to be able to use that knowledge to shine the way for others The energies are very strong. Um, apply that to your situation and see how it is that you can take that interpretation and make sense of it within your own experience of whatever is happening in your world. But there is definitely a sense of an awareness that is now being taken from yourself out into the wider environment, wider community. And in doing that, there is an ending of a cycle. There is light that's being brought into the dark. There is a wisdom that is being shared. And it's like it's a calling of yours to do so. Wow. Oh my goodness. I just want to see if we can get anything else from this. Let's have a look. I don't, I mean, the energies are very, there are major energies. This is not your day to day stuff, but um, I wonder how it pertains to day to day stuff, though. Do you know? I mean, these, these are energies that um, are life changing. But let's see if we can see anything with regards to how it might be affecting yourself or others on a day-to-day -day level, day-to-day -day experiences. Okay. Okay. All right, so tricky situations. We're talking about deceits, deceptions. Remember how we were talking about bringing light to um, old orders, things that have um, been, that have not been transparent. Queen of Cups. Oh, my gosh, love that. Don't you love that? Ten of cups there. That's all around happiness, harmony. <sighs> okay, so swords, the swords energy is here. The seven of swords and the three of swords. So this is about um, potential deceptions, potential truths that have been um, hidden, kept away. This um, hurts. Mm, disappointments so whatever it is that something that has held people captive in old patterns of feeling or thinking and probably because they've not seen things clearly they're not seeing the way clearly at all but here with the queen of cups we're talking about a new sense of 
happiness, new sense of well-being, a new a cleansing of sorts with this new beginning here. Now that's more of a material thing, but it's still a new beginning. And I think it's very much to do with a clearing of the heart space. So I think you're just bringing hope to others. There's, there's a sense of nurturing that you bring to the table. There's a sense of promise for something more, for that happy ending, for that happy outcome the possibilities of happiness instead of having to deal with the hardships, the disappointments in oneself and in others too. I mean, that's very much showing here. So it doesn't show specifically what this might be about, but it's certainly about returning the balance to, despite the um, mental acuity here, there is a very heart, heart-centered approach to whatever it is that you're doing and you're taking out into the world to help shift collective consciousness in some way my gosh congratulations and thank you so much 11th house you're doing an amazing job whatever it is that you're doing and taking out into the world all right so yeah congratulations well done Okay, 11th house, that is what's come through. I hope this is beneficial to you in some way. Take care and I look forward to connecting with you again. Hello to the 12th house. This house deals with hidden things, it can deal with loss endings. It can be a very psychological kind of um, house too, similar to the 8th house. So it's dealing with subconscious, even dreams, but certainly hidden places as well. So why don't we have a look at what the Oracle cards are showing us. North Node, Life's Purpose. Did you see that? Oh, New Beginnings. Optimism. Playfulness. I love that. Chaos and Conflict. Well, if you have been experiencing chaos and conflict, I'm loving these cards here. I mean, optimism, that is, you know, a really positive outlook leading to new beginnings. And that's very much in line with North Node and life's purpose, what it is you want to achieve in this world, where you'll feel the most satisfied and fulfilled. And this playfulness card here too. Hmm, lovely, beautiful actually. It's interesting how both these figures are facing that way with their backs to us. So this is about, yeah, turning your back on things that don't work, on the chaos and conflict, leaving it behind, the endings. I mean, the 12th house is about loss and endings. And um, this is pointing to an end of a time where, huh, yeah, too much uncertainty, lots of uncertainty, hidden things, lack of clarity, and you're facing the light now, bringing light to the situation. Love that. Beautiful. Why don't we have a look at what the tarot cards are showing us? have a look what else we can see here all right so that's the chaos and conflict element showing five of swords defeat or feeling defeated justice page of wands that's a new beginning there devil mm. Oh, success. We love that. Okay, this is you conquering these hmm, these elements that have kept you down, that have kept you bound, restricted. It could be to do with uh, addictions as well. That's a very real possibility when it comes to the 12th house. Um, hidden matters that are causing you internal chaos internal chaos and conflict that obviously also translates to uh, your external world too maybe also um, connections that 
leave you ill at ease here with the five of swords as well you know not giving you that sense of balance that the justice here is insisting upon but I think, I mean, this could be to do, because it's the 12th house, I mean, this could be to do with karmic cycles too. And maybe the justice is just showing you that there is a cycle that you have completed here, which has been in the past one of um, potential chaos and conflict. You've been held down by chains, whether re real or imaginary, or not imaginary, but ones that are not physical chains binding you, but um, chains that are of our own making. Okay, so that's what the devil's showing here. And so this is about removing those chains and, um, yeah, turning your back on the devil energies here, turning your back on the, the chaos, on the conflict, and moving forward. Oh, my gosh, I love that. I mean, look at all this optimism that you are looking forward to, that you're looking out towards. Yeah, looking out because the, the 12th house is about, it's, it's a very hidden place. So now you're looking out to the expansiveness of what is possible out in the world, not being um, closed off, not being hidden within yourself, not being in hidden places where the light doesn't shine. This is about you stepping out now into the world and embracing what the world has to offer you. Because look, page of wands, you've got that new energy to start in you and you're not fully in you. I mean, you're not fully new and newborn, even though you've got this new beginning here. Um, you know, you have this knowledge behind you to move forward with. Okay, that energy of of rebirth is very strong here and it's great because look north node and life's purpose all of this experience of the devil energy the conflict it has been for a purpose in your life it it means that you are now more knowledgeable more aware through this conflict you've had to find this balance for yourself and this is a very positive outcome and so we're loving that because, look, it means that you get to ride forward successfully in victory, having conquered whatever chains have held you down, whether they are addictions or um, subconscious patterns of thought, behaviours that have kept you like fighting with yourself even where you're always at a, at a um, where you seem to feel, um, feeling that sense of disharmony within yourself. Oh, love that. I mean, this is really showing victory here. And I, I'm really, really happy. I'm so, so proud of you, House 12, for what this means for you and your life moving forward. So this, this is a great new start for you. So congratulations. I want to say happy birthday, new beginning here New beginnings. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Beautiful. All right then, so house 12, that is what's come through for you. I hope there is a message in this that will serve you. I wish you all the best. Take care and I'll connect with you again in another reading.